Welcome to the introductory courses on grade and summary findings tables. These modules have been prepared and narrated by Nancy Santesso and Holger Schunemann at McMaster University, Hamilton, Canada. This course includes a series of training modules which include an introduction to grade and summary findings tables, how to grade the quality of a body of evidence, including modules for each criteria, choosing comparisons and outcomes, and how to use the grade profiler, also called Grade Pro, the software to prepare summary of findings tables and evidence profiles. This module describes the process of choosing comparisons and outcomes for a summary of findings table. Before we go into the details about how to choose comparisons and outcomes, we wanted to remind you about the overall structure of the summary of findings table. The introductory module describes the table in more detail, however I wanted to point out the sections of the table covered in this module. The top section specifically describes the content of the table, the PICO, the population, the intervention, the comparison, and the setting. And on the left hand side are the outcomes. The outcomes presented in the table should be outcomes important to patients and other decision makers and are typically the primary outcomes in a review. Then, for each outcome, the table includes the results, or the magnitude of the effect, and the assessment of the quality of evidence using the grade approach. Remember also that one summary findings table is featured at the front of a Cochrane review, which usually describes the main comparison of the review. Other summary findings tables, describing other comparisons in the review, can be included in the review under additional tables. Before you start to create your summary findings table, you will need to choose which comparison to include in the table and which outcomes. It is recommended that only one comparison should be included in a table, that is, one intervention compared to no treatment or another treatment in one population and at one time point. But what comparison should you include in the summary findings table? It is the summary findings table that would be presented at the front of the review and therefore it should be the most important comparison in the most important population and it should be the most important to decision makers and you should also not choose the comparison because it has the most data and results. The decision around what comparison to choose can sometimes be quite easy. For example, for this review the intervention was self-management programs and it was compared to usual care in people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in an outpatient setting. However, some reviews will have multiple interventions, multiple comparator interventions, and be in multiple populations or settings. This can make it challenging to choose one comparison, and authors have tended to find it confusing. For example, there are reviews which lump interventions together, such as interventions for shoulder pain, while other reviews include one intervention, such as written education materials, but compare it to no materials, video materials, hands-on training, etc. Authors will need to choose one intervention and comparator to include in the summary findings table. Other reviews may include more than one population, in particular reviews with subgroup analyses. Again, you would choose the population or populations to present in the summary of findings tables according to whether it is an important difference because of the intervention itself, for example, drugs that work differently in severe or mild diseases or in men versus women, or because it will be important to decision making. Depending on importance, you can present one population in one summary of findings table and another in another table, especially when there are many outcomes in which there are subgroup differences. Or, if there are only subgroup differences for one outcome, but not others, then you could present all populations in one table, but for that outcome that was different, add a specific footnote or comment that there was a different effect in population X. In this case, the information from the meta-analysis for the outcome pregnancy was automatically imported into grade pro by subgroup. The first subgroup was all women, and the second subgroup was infertile couples. The authors decided to present the results for one subgroup, all women who were pregnant, 
and then add a comment or footnote about the other subgroup. In another review, this author reported the effects of mucolytics in children and adults. However, data only came from one subgroup, and therefore the author made a comment for that outcome and subgroup. See, for example, the cough score, and they made the comment that the data only came from children. Authors must also decide whether there are differences in how the intervention works in different populations, that is, subgroup differences, or whether the difference is not in the effect of the intervention, but a difference due to baseline risks. Consider the review of the effects of self-management programs in people with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. The authors did not find that the program had different effects in people with severe versus mild COPD for the outcome hospital admissions. However, the risk of hospital admissions is quite different in people with severe versus mild COPD. So they presented these different baseline risks in the summary of findings table. See in the example from the table that the risk of hospital admission was 10 per 100 in mild COPD without the self-management program and 7 per 100 with the program, meaning three fewer people are admitted to the hospital if they have the program. But the risk of a hospital admission is 50 per 100 in severe COPD without the program, and therefore there was a difference of 11 people who were not admitted to the hospital if they had the program. And this is very different from the difference of three people with mild COPD, and so therefore important to present the different risks. When choosing which baseline risk to provide, consider that you can provide up to three risks for each outcome. And these risks can be based on the control group risks that were found in the randomized control trials in the review or from the results from observational studies. Once you've decided on which intervention, comparator, and population to include in your summary of findings table, you will need to decide which outcomes to include. You have the option to include up to seven outcomes. These are the outcomes that someone would consider important when making a decision about whether to use an intervention or not. These are typically the primary outcomes that were identified in the review at protocol stage. Consequently, the table should include both benefits and harms or downsides. Another important note is that outcomes that you choose should be important to decision makers and your choice should not be driven by what evidence you have. For example, authors still need to include outcomes that had no data or outcomes that had non-significant or negative effects or outcomes that were not pooled. In this case, the review authors did not find data for one of their primary outcomes, pain, but they still included it in the table because it is important to decision making and noted that the outcome was not measured. In another case, the authors did not pull the results of the outcome health-related quality of life, but they still included it in the table because it is important to decision making, but they reported the results in the comment column. Another note about outcomes it is very important to provide information about the outcome. In this case, it is very useful to know that the change in quality of life of 2.58 points is on a scale of 0 to 100 as opposed to a scale of 0 to 10. Knowing this would definitely change how you interpreted the 2.58 change. And it is also helpful to know when the outcome was measured, for example, at 3 to 12 months. And overall, it is important to note that similar outcomes should be presented in the variety of summary products within the review. If an outcome is important enough to be described in the abstract, the plain language summary, and the implications for practice and research, then it should be included in the summary of findings table. If you have more questions and would like more information about what outcomes to choose and which comparisons to choose to present in your table, please consult chapters 5 and 11 of the Cochrane Handbook, 
or consult the help section of the Grade Pro software. Or you can also contact us at support at Grade Pro. We'd be happy to answer your questions.